Hi, I'm Joe Dante. You know, here at Trailers from Hell, we don't usually spend a lot of time revisiting uh, titles that we've talked about in the past, but we do make exceptions on occasion, and this is one of them. The last time I talked about Mario Bava's Blood and Black Lace, I spent most of my time apologizing for the incredibly crappy print uh, that we had of the trailer. It was all faded and scratched, and it wasn't even the whole thing. Uh, so to right that wrong, um, we're going to do it over. And so this is my uh, uh, new commentary on Blood and Black Lace because we got a terrific trailer uh, with the right color uh, that makes the picture look as great as it really does. So here it is. A house of high fashion, a dazzling whirl of elegance, of exotic extravagant beauties. In the new media dictionaries of the future, looking up the definition of the word lurid should take you directly to an embed of this, Mario Bava's masterpiece of murder, which is managed without ever playing a single classy theater or really ever making much money to become the classic giallo film of all time. The original title encapsulates the plot. Sidone per l'assassino, six women for the murderer. Someone is knocking off models at a glitzy Roman fashion house and the suspects are many and multinational as this is an Italian-German-French co-production. But this isn't a plot movie, it's totally style over substance. And what style? The lighting alone puts this up with the technicolor work of Jack Cardiff and Claude Renoir. The bold use of clashing colors imparts a level of unreality that's seductive in its visual beauty, even while depicting violence so over the top for the time as to make death itself seem attractive. Sadism has rarely been so romantically photographed. This trailer captures the hallucinatory quality of the original Technicolor prints, but few of the video releases have done justice to its artistry. In the U.S. version, which by the way is one of the few times that Bava's original cut made it onto U.S. screens without extensive alterations, Paul Fries dubs most of the male characters, and it's fun to watch him talking to himself in group shots. Cameron Mitchell so loved working with Bava that he used to carry around the variety review of Knives of the Avenger in his wallet. Carlo Rusticelli's exquisitely sleazy score is the blood red cherry on top of this slasher classic, which paved the way for Dario Argento and influenced scores of directors from Scorsese to Tarantino. And me, of course. Suddenly, these lace curtains ignite a drama that will lacerate your emotions.